Task number eight, bypass server side filtering file extensions. This task is part of the upload vulnerabilities module, which is part of the complete beginner path on TryHackMe. Time to turn things up another notch. Client side filters are easy to bypass. You can see the code for them. Even if it's been obfuscated and needs processed before you can read it. But what happens when you can't see or manipulate the code? Well, that's a server-side filter. In short, we have to perform a lot of testing to build up an idea of what is or is not allowed through the filter, then gradually put together a payload which conforms to the restrictions. For the first part of this task, we'll take a look at a website that's using a blacklist for file extensions such as server-side filter. There are a variety of different ways that this could be coded and be, and the bypass we use is dependent on that. In the real world, we wouldn't be able to see the code for this, but for this example, it will be included in here. So this is the code that does the filtering for our input, let's say for our um, upload page and it's a PHP, right? Here we see the variable uh, that gets the extension, gets the file, path information, gets the file, file to be uploaded by name and extension. Check the extension against the blacklist, PHP and PHTML. And here we have the, the statement that checks the extension in case it's a PHP, PHTML uh, and the null. Then upload fail will set to true and it will break the operation. The default one is upload fail is false. So basically you cannot um, upload empty or PHP or PHTML file extensions. In this instance, the code is looking for the last period in the file name and uses that to confirm the extension. So that is what we'll be trying to bypass here. Otherwise, the code could be working, include searching for the first period in the file name or splitting the file name at each period and checking to see if any blacklisted extensions show up. We'll cover this latter case later on, but in the meantime, let's focus on the code we've got here. We can see that the code is filtering out for the .php and .phtml extension. So we want to upload a PHP script. We're going to have to find another extension. The Wikipedia page for PHP gives us a few common extensions that we can try. However, there are actually a variety of other more rare, rarely used extensions available that server side, that web servers may nonetheless still recognize. This include a range variety of PHP. Many of these bypass the filter, which only blocks .php and .phtml, but it appears that the server is configured not to recognize them as PHP files, as in the below example. Here we can see that even though .php is not accepted, PHP 5 is accepted. Here is the example. This is actually the default for Apache 2 servers. At the time of writing, however, the sysadmin may have changed the default configuration or the server may be out of date. So it's well worth trying. Eventually we find that the .phr extension bypass the filter and works thus giving us our shell. Here is that example. And here you can actually see that file extension. Let's have a look at another example with a different filter. This time we'll do it completely black box. That is without the source code. Once again, we have our upload form. Okay, we'll start by scoping this out with a completely legitimate upload. Let's try to upload a JPEG file, right? A, an image. Successfully. Well, that tells us that JPEGs are accepted at least Let's go for one that we can be pretty sure will be rejected, which is a PHP shell in valid file format. We are correct. Can say that was unexpected. From here, we enumerate further, trying the techniques from above and just generally trying to get an idea of what the filter will accept or reject. In this case, we find that there are no shell extensions that both execute and are not filtered. So it's back to the drawing board. 
In the previous example, we saw that we that the code was using the path info method PHP to get the last few characters after the dot. But what happens if it filters the input slightly differently? Let's try uploading a file called called shell.jpg.php. We already know that JPEG files are accepted. So what if the filter is just checking to see if JPEG file extension is somewhere within the input? Pseudocore for this kind of filter may look something like this. So here is a accept file from the user, save file name in, vari in variable user input. If the string.jpg is in variable user input, then save the file, else return the error message. When we try to upload our file, we get a success message. Navigating to uploads directory confirms that the payload was successfully uploaded. And here is the example. Now, just by simply using a listener, you can see after we we launch the, the um, file that we uploaded, we can see that we have access to the console. This is by no means an exhaustive list of Apple vulnerabilities related to file extensions. As with everything in hacking, we are looking to exploit flaws in code that otherwise have written this, have written. This code may very well be uniquely written for the task at hand. This is the really important point to take away from this task. There are a million different ways to implement the same feature when it comes to programming. Your exploitations must be tailored to the filter at hand. The key to bypass any kind of server-side filter is to enumerate and see what is allowed, as well as what is blocked. Then try to craft a payload which can pass the criteria the filter is looking for. Pretty simple. Now your turn. You know the drill by now. Figure out and bypass the filter to upload, then activate a shell. Your flag is in var... The sites you are accessing is this one. All right. Let's select a file. We go to downloads and let's try our PHP. Okay. And then we say upload. File type is invalid. Okay. We select a JPG one. And then we say upload. A file uploaded successfully. So a JPG is actually successfully uploaded. This means this means that we can use we can rename PHP JPG dot PHP. Okay, we'll leave it like this and then we'll say here, select, we go for this one, open, upload, file type is invalid, What will upload? Let's see. File uploaded successfully. Now, outputs the name of the chosen file and VLP1234. Chosen. No file chosen. Chosen. We'll paste this and say chosen.
Okay. Now let's duplicate this. Go into privacy. Ooh, there you go. We can see it over here. Now, if we launch this, we should see here exactly. We have a reverse shell. Now, if you say cat var, all right, flag.txt, we have it over here. Okay, so basically what we did, we just uh, used, at first launch, we saw that we here we have a terminal that offers these three actions, right? Now, after we scanned the application with GoBuster, after we scanned the application with GoBuster, we saw that we have two directories privacy where we can see over here that is the directory that uh, will store the uploaded files and assets now if we for instance we we try to upload the php and we try to upload the php file actually reverse php but it did not work then we try to upload a jpeg file and that worked well that one tell us that .jpeg will be accepted, but .php is blacklisted. So we have to use PHP 5, which is not blacklisted. This one then was successfully uploaded on the target. After that, we just enter in the privacy, we open up a Netcat listener on our machine, and we access the file to get the reverse shell and get the, the flag under var. Cool.